what's up everybody welcome to another episode of cosmat wrestling i'm at carpio alongside ty Lorado. yeah man what's going on we'll go over another episode of monday night raw just for you guys let's start to, let's start it off yeah well the show opened up with none other than the wwe champion drew mcintyre coming down to the ring as you remember last week on raw the contract signing between himself and dolph actually got out of hand for their contract signing or for their match at extreme rules drew explained how he is letting dolph actually pick the stipulation for their match but no matter what, Drew claims he will still come out victorious. So, Drew is a man of his words, so I don't, don't, don't disagree. Drew then demanded that Dolph Ziggler come down to the ring, asking him what the stipulation will be. Dolph said he'll have to just wait and see for Extreme Rules this weekend, and that it will be a surprise. Oh. Speaking about surprises, Dolph had a surprise for Drew McIntyre that night, bringing out none other than a returning superstar that I certainly didn't see coming, Heath Slater, saying that Dolph isn't the only one that... Drew McIntyre his backstab to get to make his way to the top. Well, what happens? Dolph actually sets up a match with Heath Slater versus Drew McIntyre as the bell rings. Heath actually gets Drew into the corner, throwing a few punches uh, along the turnbuckle. But then out of nowhere, Drew hits him with that devastating claymore kick for the one, two, three. Yeah, I think that'll put anybody out. We then saw after the match, Dolph Ziggler going after Heath Slater. Drew McIntyre, the friend that he is, ran back to the ring to defend his friend. And we saw a really powerful moment with Drew McIntyre and Heath Slater embracing, holding up the symbol of their former team, the 3MB. Well, after this, we cut to commercial and headed back with Bailey and Banks in the ring, claiming that Rock can actually start with them too. They don't stop bragging about themselves like they always do. Yeah, Until saying Oscar. they're gonna take over, take over the company, man. They're gonna be. Double champions, both tag team Raw and SmackDown champions. Until Asuka actually comes out making fun of Banks as Banks claims herself as two belts Banks come Extreme Rules. Yeah, I mean, they put Asuka on the mic again. I really don't know why. We always talk about that, but, you know, I guess some people must like it. I, I don't know about it. I don't like it so much, but... Bailey asks uh, Asuka what Banks actually has in store for... For her and Kyrie Sane's music actually hits, then we were led to an impromptu match with Sane versus Sasha Banks. After a good few turnbuckle whips by Banks and a hard meteora by Banks as well, Kyrie kicked out. You know, Kyrie is a warrior, but Kyrie also then slides under Banks for the Boston Crab, but Bailey actually breaks it up, leaving Kyrie Sane to win via disqualification. Yeah, the match was won by a disqualification by the Kabuki Warriors, but it didn't stop there. Kyrie Sane and Asuka went after Banks and Bailey. Kyrie Sane going to the top rope, taking all three competitors out as we cut to commercial. Well, after the break, we cut to a quick promo with Seth Rollins stomping Ray's head into the steel steps just a few weeks ago. Then we cut backstage after, uh, I think, we think, come on. Uh, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy attacked Aleister Black, but it was never confirmed, but I think we can all agree who did it. Well, Black's head was actually face down with Rey Mysterio's mask on him as Seth walks away. Saying, what a shame. Saying, yep. Well, then we cut to break, and after we met backstage with none other than the Big Show and the Viking Raiders after they were practicing bowling. Yeah, you know, the Viking Raiders don't seem to take things very seriously, and Big Show didn't take very kindly to that saying that this is his chance to get after Randy Orton, and, you know, they better get ready for the match, even giving them a chop to the chest to get them ready, which seemed to fire the Viking Raiders up. Well, they were led to uh, have a match later on tonight as them three versus Andrade and Garza and their Viper, Randy Orton. Big Show's in no mood with the Viper right now. It's, he's in no mood for mind games. He's in no mood for messing around. He's in mood for, for kicking straight... Kicking some ass. Yep, kicking some ass. That's all it is. Returning from commercial break, we then had none other than the Kevin Owens show, as he said he didn't need these chairs in the ring for his next guest, calling him a piece of garbage. Then Seth Rollins and his disciple Buddy Murray walked down to the ring, saying Seth then saying he didn't want to fight with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens then saying that even though he might not like the person that Seth Rollins has become, they shared a very meaningful moment having a match together at WrestleMania. As you remember, Kevin Owens even won that match. Seth Rollins then said he's not there to go down memory lane, he's actually there to challenge Rey Mysterio to a match for Extreme Rules this weekend. We then had Rey and Dominic come down to the ring, Kevin Owens filling in for Aleister Black because there was supposed to be a tag team match with Aleister Black and Rey Mysterio, but after we assumed Seth did to Aleister Black backstage, Kevin Owens was a willing participant and filled in for Aleister Black. We then had an impromptu tag team match with Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens facing Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins. 
With Ray Sun, Dominic ringside, and Mysterio sets up Rollins for the 619, but Seth escapes and holds Dominic hostage outside the ring. Alistair Black's music then hits, and Seth taunts him to kick him, but if he wins by... He, if, if Seth Rollins wins, he actually gets to pick the stipulation for, for his match at Extreme Rules with, with Rey Mysterio. But the, star, the smart star that Black actually is, he hesitated and didn't kick him. And then Dominic actually raked Buddy Murphy's eyes, rolled him in the ring, Seth hit him with a 619, a frog splash for the 1-2-3. Yeah, it was great to see Dominic help his father get the win for the team. And now, and now Rey Mysterio gets to pick the stipulation for the Extreme Rules match, wasting no time saying that they're going to have an eye for an eye match, whatever that means. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But he said, he then said he will rip Seth Rollins' eye right out of the socket. Hey, look, usually if they throw random stuff at us like this, an eye for an eye, no idea what that is. Hey, we, 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 didn't, know, we didn't know any of the matches that they were going to throw at us sometimes here. And, but, but, I mean, look at the Boneyard match, for example. People didn't, think, didn't know how that was going to go. And it turned out it to turned be one out, of the best matches of WrestleMania. Absolutely, and it was Undertaker's last match, so just... God bless, God bless the dead man. But without further ado, heading forward, we then cut to commercial and came back with Bobby Lashley and MVP marching down to reveal our very own United States Championship. Yeah, the new championship looked good in my opinion. I like the new design. I think it looked classy and really put a nice shine on the new United States Champion. Lashley puts the title around MVP's waist until Ricochet and Cedric walk out claiming how the titles are not given but earned after the commercial, sorry, after the commercial break. Right before the four stars were to clash out their anger, we were led to the impromptu match with Bobby Lashley and MVP facing off none other than Cedric Alexander and Ricochet. Yeah, I mean, MVP wasn't even in his wrestling attire. He was wrestling in his uh, suit and tie. These impromptu tag team matches are usually hit or miss. This one was actually pretty good. The match started off with a good back and forth, but you know, the impressive and dominating Bobby Lashley had to win it with a vicious spear. Right on, right on Alexander for the upset win. You know, Alexander and Ricochet, I do think they work very well together, but of course Bobby Lashley right now, he does have to get a win just to keep himself uh, powerful and, and moving forward. We then cut to Angel Garza and Andrade backstage as the fight for Randy Orton interrupts them, scaring them, saying if they get in his way, they will be introduced to the legend killer. And Randy Orton is a man of his word, so hey, I'd be scared if I were them too. Cut to that six-day tag team match with Big Show and uh, the Viking Raiders facing off against Randy Orton, Angel Garza, and Andrade. After some back-and-forth action, the Raiders go for the Viking experience until Andrade actually saves Garza as, we are in the, as Orton, the, the sneaky star that he is, blind tags himself in, hitting Eric with that massive RKO for the win. Yeah, this match was a pretty good one, in my opinion. We saw some very uh, interesting tactics by Randy Orton, even pulling one of his teammates out of the ring, telling him that he better get his act together and not cost them this match. After that match, we then had the Iconics backstage pulling their usual antics and being obnoxious with Ruby Riot. You know, they were calling her a loser, so hey, Ruby still... R Ruby doesn't have much to uh, lose at this lose point. At this She's point. ready to go, she was ready for a fight, and she was set to face Billy Kay later that night. If you thought the backstage chaos was enough, we then saw Randy Orton having a quick word with the Nature Boy Ric Flair as our truth comes along, looking the Nature Boy head to toe, telling him he cleans up for the dirtiest player in the room. Yeah, then the funny guy, our truth is, then accuses... That it's not actually Ric Flair, it's Akira Tozawa in a very clever disguise. Well, then Akira Tozawa's cry was heard as he runs towards our truth and Randy Orton actually tells Tozawa that uh, our truth ran a certain way when he actually didn't, he ran the other way. So, hey, Randy Orton is a little dirty of a player himself, too. Kind of keeping our truth a little safe with his Yeah, maybe, maybe he likes our truth because I didn't see that coming for sure. After the commercial break, we then had the match with Ruby Riot versus Billy Kay. This match was a good back and forth. But of course, the Iconics had to win with a distraction from Peyton Royce on the outside of the ring, letting Billy Kay win via roll-up. You know, after the break, we learned that Nikki Cross will be on commentary for the main event as she was escorted. Listen to this. She was escorted by security to leave. Since she's on SmackDown, she is not on Raw. But the commentators vouched for her, and they did let her say as Samoa Joe actually was holding her back. As, was, as Bailey and Sasha Banks tried to do everything in their power to get her kicked out by antagonizing her and... Sasha ba and Samoa Joe was pretty much like a babysitter. He was just trying to do his best to hold Nikki Cross back. Once all the madness settles with Nikki Cross, Bailey, and Sasha Banks, uh, Kyrie and Asuka actually come out, but they had an impromptu match for the main event. But listen to this, right? 
If they won Kyrie and Asuka, they would be able to challenge for the Raw Tag Team titles next week on Monday Night Raw. But you know what happened? Asuka actually got a massive win for her team as Asuka drags Bailey into the ring with the Asuka lock applied. Banks runs in but is speared down by Kyrie Sane, then flipped over for the pin by the Empress of Tomorrow. You know, so I guess they're out there. Yeah, they got they week. got their shots for all of the gold that Sasha Banks and Bailey wear. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that match turns out next week. Well, guys, that was this week's Monday Night Raw. Thanks for watching our video. Leave a comment and subscribe. And let us know what you're looking forward to about Extreme Rules this weekend. Peace out, guys. See ya.